Let's discuss about the assumptions we are making about this, the distribution of our multidimensional data. Um, in the case when our data is uh, over a continuous spectrum, very often, like we did also in the univariate uh, case, we are going to assume that we have uh, a normal distribution, except that this time it's a normal distribution over several dimensions. So this is called a multivariate normal distribution. And I would like to discuss in this video uh, some, some properties about this um, uh, type of normal distribution. Um, so we, we have this um, uh, probability uh, density that we denote by uh, um, normal and we indicate here that we have d dimension and we indicate the mean and the uh, covariance matrix and this is a d dimensional vector and this is a d by d uh, matrix and the uh, density function p of x remember x is a vector uh, in here uh, is of this form this is the typical form of a multivariate normal distribution and it's one over uh, 2 pi to the power d over 2 times uh, square root of determinant of sigma times exponent of minus 1 over 2 x minus mu transposed sigma to, to power minus 1 times x minus mu and we have here also on the uh, right hand side a, um, a typical um, visualization plot of um, a normal distribution over two variables and I'm going to come back to this and discuss a little bit more about the shape of this um, uh, normal distribution. It's important also to realize that in the case of a um, multivariate normal distribution, each one of the components, uh, each one of the d components is going to be normally distributed. In, in other words, it's going to have a univariate uh, normal distribution. But be careful because the reverse is not true. Uh, even though you might have a number of um, uh, normal distributions, the fact that you put them together in a vector doesn't make it a multivariate uh, normal distribution. And one thing I want to discuss also is about the distance to the mean. And I want to remind you that in the, uni in the unidimensional case, so in the unidimensional case, we very often used in, in many of our calculations when we dealt with um, uh, maximum likelihood estimators and we discussed about uh, bias and, and many other things, we, we consider this distance um, from the data to the mean and um, the squared distance uh, from x to mu uh, was in all, of, in all of our calculations, we were dealing with this sort of um, formula, x minus mu over sigma squared. And the significance of this kind of uh, term was that this was the square distance from x to mu, um, but this was normalized in standard deviation units. That was the significance of division by, by sigma. So there was this normalization. And I'm just rewriting this uh, uh, just to make the point that this is going to be very similar to what we have in the multivariate case. So I'm just rewriting this to, to show you that this is about um, having x minus mu times sigma squared to power minus 1 times x minus mu. And, and of course, I mean, this is just a silly re rewriting of, um, of this numerical um, uh, fraction in here. But the, the reason I'm writing it like this is to make the point that in the multivariate case, we have something um, very similar. So in a multivariate or, or multidimensional um, uh, case, we are going to use when we have to reason about the distance between our data point, which is now a vector, um, and the mean, which is another vector, we are going to uh, use the so-called Mahalanobis um, distance. So. Mahalanobis distance and this is defined in the following way we will have um, remember again these are vectors so it's going to be x minus mu it's a difference of vectors transposed times sigma the covariance matrix to power minus 1 times x minus mu 
And you will see that we will have this kind of expression in many of our calculations just coming up when we move towards doing classification and regression over multivariate normal distribution. And there is a point here about the use of uh, the inverse of sigma and the point is that when we are using the inverse uh, of this matrix, so um, using sigma to minus one, this has uh, a couple of interesting effects. One point is that if a variable has a larger vari variance than another one, because we are using the inverse, it's going to receive less weight in this um, distance. And also similarly, if you have two highly correlated variables, they are going to contribute less than two less correlated variables. And so the point is that the use of the inverse uh, of the covariance matrix is going to have as an effect the, um, uh, you know, you, you, will, you will standardize all variables to unit variance. And, and also the other effect is that it's going to eliminate correlations. And again, you will see that this um, expression of this uh, distance is going to um, appear very often in our considerations when we discuss about um, classification and uh, regression. And here is, um, uh, I want to focus um, a little bit more on this uh, bivariate normal distribution and discuss about the visualization. So remember again that, uh, you, I mean, this is the um, general form of the uh, density function, the, the one that we just uh, formulated on the previous slide. And I want to open this up in the case when we have only two dimensions. And, and so visually here you would have um, x1 on this dimension and x2 on, on this dimension. And then we have here a, a visualization of this um, density function. And so in this case, when we have just uh, uh, two dimensions, um, we have in this case uh, the mean vector. So mu is, uh, you know, just two dimensions. Uh, so it's going to be mu1, mu2. And, and remember, we always write it as a column vector, so transposed. And um, the covariance matrix, sigma, is a two by two matrix because we have two uh, variables. And is going to be on the diagonal, we will have variances of the two variables, so sigma1 squared and sigma2 squared. And um, on, the, uh, uh, on the other diagonal, we are going to have the correlation row. There is only one correlation, so just the correlation between uh, the variable 1 and variable 2. So it's the correlation row times sigma1, sigma2, and obviously exactly the same here. So row sigma1 sigma 2. So, so that's the um, covariance matrix in, in this case. And in fact, using this mu and sigma, we can now rewrite this p of x. And uh, in fact, we can write it in a different form, in a, in a uh, normalized form uh, in this case. And so uh, in this case, we will have p of x and, and x. Uh, I'm just indicating that it's over two variables. So I'm just writing uh, p of x1, x2, just to make, again, the point that we have these uh, two uh, variables. And this is going to be 1 over. And it's 2 pi times sigma 1, sigma 2, um, square root of 1 minus rho squared. And then we have the exponential over minus 1 over 2 times 1 minus rho squared times, and, and here I'm going to write and explain in just a moment. So I'm writing z1 squared minus 2 rho z1, z1, z2 plus z2 squared. And uh, these uh, z1 and z2, they stand for z1 is, uh, or in fact, I'm writing both of them, zi is xi minus mu i divided by sigma i. 
And these are the standardized uh, variables. So again, standardized uh, with respect to mean and, and by um, uh, normalizing with respect to the variables, uh, to, to the variance. So the standardized variables. Um, and this is called, when you write it like this, this is called a Z-normalization. And uh, th there are a few things that I want to discuss on this um, um, on this page uh, regarding uh, the uh, correlation row. So, the correlation row, as we discussed in in our previous video, takes values between uh, minus one and one. And um, as a matter of fact, if uh, row is plus one or minus one, then the two variables are linearly related. And so the observations are effectively one-dimensional. Uh, the other one is, is just um, uh, a linearly dependent variable on the first one. And so what this means is that one of, the, one of these two variables can be disposed of. So in fact, we don't have a bivariate uh, problem, but we have a univariate problem that, that, uh, of the same type that we discussed before. And on the other hand, if rho equals zero, then it means that the two variables are independent. And so these uh, cross terms, they, they disappear and we get the product of two univariate densities. And on the other, on the, on the other hand, if the variances are non-zero and uh, uh, rho is uh, strictly between minus one and one, we have that matrix sigma is uh, non-singular and so it's positive uh, definite and so uh, we can discuss about the inverse of sigma. One, one other thing that I want to just point out to you is that um, this term that we have here under the exponent um, should be quite familiar if you remember from uh, geometry and the point I'm making here is that um, so I'm, I'm just going to write here note that this equation z1 squared uh, plus 2 rho z1 z2 plus z, z2 squared equal to some constant, that's the equation of an ellipse. And, and this uh, ellipse uh, is, is going to um, have different forms depending on the value of rho. And, and that we, this, this discussion just uh, allows me to open up, um, uh, you know, uh, discussing about uh, the shape of this uh, plot. And uh, the point is that if rho is larger than zero, then the major axis of the ellipse has a positive slope. And, and if uh, rho is smaller than zero, then the ma major axis has a negative slope. And I want to discuss this in a little bit more details. Um, uh, what does it mean for the shape of this um, uh, density function? And visually, we have um, uh, this uh, displayed in uh, two dimensions, just, so just as a um, uh, contour plot. And then we have uh, the same thing also in, in three dimensions. And so we have this uh, first, uh, this, uh, this situation here in the top left uh, corner, and, and the same thing is uh, displayed also in three dimensions in this um, top left corner. And that's the case when we have, in fact, the covariance of x1 and x2 equal to zero, and also the variances of x1 and x2 being uh, equal to each other. And so in this case, this uh, contour is really a circle, and in three dimension, it's going to look uh, something like this. Now, if we move to, to this case where we still have the covariances, uh, co the covariance is equal to zero, but in this case, one of the variances, let's say variance of x1, is larger than the variance of x2. So what this means is that instead of a circle, you will have an ellipse, and um, you will have an ellipse with this... Uh, uh, larger uh, diameter uh, along x1. And so the contour is going to look uh, like this, and in three dimension um, it's going to look like this, where you have along x1 
um, you have a, a larger diameter. And then in this um, um, bottom left corner, we have the case where the covariance uh, or between x1 and x2 is uh, larger than zero. And so that means that the um, major axis of uh, our ellipse uh, uh, is uh, uh, positive. So, or, or it has a positive slope. So the ellipse looks, looks like this. And in three dimension, you can see it like this one. And finally, the case when the covariance is uh, smaller than zero, then the major axis of our um, ellipse, of our contour, um, has a negative slope. And in three dimensions, you see it like this.